Okay, so this is a quick little tutorial on building a custom texture map inside of Twinmotion. So again, uh, materials in Twinmotion are amazing. There's a ton of things to choose from, but often you're going to find yourself in a situation where you need something specific, uh, an exact brick, an exact stone, or you're replicating an existing um, material on your model. So what you need to be able to do at times is make something from an image. So the process of doing that, um, pretty simple. I'm just going to make uh, a really quick default object here. Let's just drop in uh, a simple little box and I'm going to use the scale tool to turn this into a wall. Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a human analog uh, something so that we have scale and position that person close to the wall just so you know I'm not making um, I'm going to use a stone texture map here on this but you know I want to make sure that that I, I'm dealing with stones uh, not dealing with boulders or something ridiculous right so uh, let's make sure this dude's looking at the wall there too because it seems to make sense all right so uh, underneath my materials um, category right here, I'm just going to go add a new material, and this is going to make a blank default material. So the material that I'm going to use is coming from um, the SketchUp Texture Club, which is pretty awesome. Um, and it's something that both it has both a, a free version and a paid version. The free version, you're getting uh, uh, just your basic seamless textures that you can download here. Um, if you are a club member, in other words, if you're paying for the surface, you get a uh, higher resolution and you get um, additional maps like normal and specular. Now, one of the things I'm going to do with this map, uh, because again, oftentimes you need, specifically, you'll need a normal map to create that illusion of depth on a surface. Um, so even if you're taking a photograph of a material, something like that, um, that, that's just something that you often need. So I'm going to walk through that process as well. So I've downloaded this image right here, uh, and we are going to apply that into um, the color channel. So right here, my first uh, item that I have is color. Then I've got grunge, which essentially adds um, a little overlay to this um, and you'll see that here once I add the stone in and what the grunge is going to do is it, it creates a little bit of an illusion of weathering but it also helps in terms of overlaying a little bit of detail so that you don't see the repetition in a texture map and we'll look at that in just a second so I'm going to go to my texture file right here uh, and select where that little Swash through right here implies that there's no texture at all. I'm going to click that and go to open. And in my class file right here, I have a couple of texture maps I've been playing with. And we are just going to go to stone wall and open. Um, once I have that, let's go ahead and drag it on. And this is where, again, you can see having a human analog in is nifty. Because, yeah, those are huge. So we need to go to... Um, our UV mapping and scale this way down. Yeah, and even at point one, that's a little bit big, so let's drop this down to a point zero five. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that there's a little bit of repetition, this stone and this stone and this stone. Um, they create what is called tiling, um, and when further away, you can definitely see that pattern. Um, the grunge map up here is going to help break that up a little bit, not a lot, but essentially it overlays an additional pattern. You can sort of see it. It's a little bit of darkness there in the background, but it overlays um, an arbitrary, non-repeating pattern that simply breaks that up a little bit. Now, the next thing that you'll notice is I, this is a stone wall, and we have the illusion of depth, but when I get close, 
you can definitely see that this is a flat wall. So this is where adding, at the very least, adding a normal map really helps. So this particular map, since I am not a paying customer of the SketchUp Texture Map Club, I need to create a normal map from this. And there's a variety of ways to do that. Um, the easiest method that I've found, not necessarily the best, but the easiest, and I like to go easy first, is um, this great little website called Smart Normal. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to load in that stone wall texture map. And essentially this as a normal map is looking for brightness contrast. So I can do some things like take this into Photoshop and turn it black and white and, and modify a few settings and get a little bit better results, but often just loading this in um, and working through the bias right here, which is basically r ramping up the brightness contrast is going to do enough for me. Um, this picks up on every little detail. So this is really, really grungy rock. So one of the, the things to soften that just a little bit, so we're really getting more emphasis on the mortar joints here and not just the surface of the stone is to turn on blur. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of that detail out. Not a lot, so no blur, blur. You can see there's just that little pull out. It's a little bit of softening on the details. From there, you just hit the Save button, and then I'm going to right click and save this as my stone wall normal. So let's grab that. And let's run a save as I want to drop that in the correct folder. I guess I had dropped that in the correct folder. Cool. Okay, so back to twin. So once we're back in twin motion, that normal map needs to go to my normal map um, settings right here. So let's just drop this down to about 50. Details, open, Stonewall normal, and I'll say OK. And so again, what this allows us to do then is actually begin to see the impact of that normal map in terms of how light is going to bounce off of the surface. So again, the more I ramp that up, the more shadowing, the more detail I start to see, the more sort of exaggerates that. And you can certainly go beyond the normal map and add some things in, uh, in terms of the overall roughness, metallic, so on and so forth. But um, in general, I've found that just adding in that normal map does quite a bit for me in terms of creating that little bit of additional depth um, on those surfaces to get them looking uh, like it is a real surface with actual texture.